All right, we're going to sing a couple more songs. If you want to sit down, you're welcome to, or you can stand up and keep going with us. <laughs> if you had a big breakfast and you want to burn a few calories, this next song will help you do that. And it's called I've Got Joy. tone it down a little bit. So, again, our program this week was about Jami Kingdom, which represents, Jami represents family, and it's about being part of God's family and showing love.
As we start our program, we'd like to open it with prayer. So if everyone would please bow their heads with me. Dear Father God, we wanted to say thank you for giving us a fun and great week at Jami Kingdom, where we learned all about you, being part of God's family, and how much you love us and care for us. We just ask that you be with us this morning, help us to have a great time, help us to make new friends and enjoy the company of our existing friends and just ask that you be with us today and throughout this week and help us to always remember that you love us and you're there for us in jesus name and everyone said amen, amen. thank you okay so we have our opening song amazing grace many of you probably know amazing grace but this is a little bit different version a little more lively version so love you to join us but we are going to come up have all the kids come up that want to come up. And adults, too, you're welcome to join us. We're going to sing Amazing Grace. It'll be on the screen. Yeah. Everybody stand, please. You actually will get to learn a little Swahili this morning.
right. So, just to give you a little bit of the highlights of what we learned this week, we had every night a Bible story, and you'll see more about that a little bit later when we have all of our kids in our Spotlight Bible VBS. And then what we did was we'd have a Bible pal that helped them remember the action point, Bible action point every day. And so the first one is, Jesus loves me, I am saved, right? And who wants to come up and hold this sign for me? Andrew, you want to build it? All right, so let's put it, we'll put it right like that. There you go. All right, and then who is our Bible pal for the day? The bush baby, yeah. And her name was Gentle, right? The Gallego. So she, bush babies, I don't know how many, she know about bush babies, they like to cry really loud. They're small but mighty. And so if they're in danger or they can't find their family, they're going to scream really loud. I won't do that for you, but uh, they, they like to be very, very vocal. And so that was to remind us that when parents come to their rescue or family comes to their rescue, just like Jesus comes to our rescue, I am saved, right? And on day two, and when our Bible story was Adam and Eve, that was day one. Day two was, Jesus loves me, I am brave, right? And so... All right, and so on day two, we had a pangolin. I don't know how many of you know a pangolin, but that is a kind of scaly, what? It's a mammal, right? And it is what? It kind of looks like an anteater, right? Scaly anteater. And when they get scared, what do they do? They roll up in a ball and those scales protect them. Right, so lions and hyenas can't eat them when they're all tucked up in a ball because those scales protect them. So this is... Our, our uh, posy, our pangolin, and again, our action point for the day said, Jesus loves me, I am brave, right? And so that helped us to remember we can always be brave. We don't have to roll up in a ball, right, with Jesus by our side. And <clears throat> we also learned about Queen Esther that night, and we actually had a queen come in and talk to us about it, right? Do you guys remember that? Yeah, that was pretty cool, huh? All right, so day three. What did we learn on day three? Our Bible action point was what? Jesus loves me. I am helpful. And we learned helpful because empathy, the elephant, was our Bible pal for the day. And elephants will many times help their family members out of the mud if they get stuck. And they'll help them with their trunk. And believe it or not, they also help maybe their enemies out. How many of you'd want to help your enemies out of the mud? That takes a special person, right? And with God's help, we can do that. So empathy helped us remember that we always need to be helpful. And we learned about Dorcas that night, how Dorcas, God raised her from the dead, and she was always helping others and making clothing for other people. So what did we learn on day four? I'm going to come at you. Now. We have a flyaway. <laughs> All right. Jesus loves me. I am free, right? And who was our Bible pal? Bliss, right? Bliss the bird. And she reminded us that even though you can be caged, you can become free, right? And so many times when birds are let out of their cage, they like to fly. And so Bliss reminded us of that. And our Bible story for the day was um, having to do with Moses. And that went through the whole gamut from the time he was a baby in the basket all the way up until he freed the Israelites. And we even talked about the different plagues, right? 
So, I am free. And that reminds us about Moses and freeing the Israelites. And last night, which was last evening, Jesus loves me, what? I am joyful. joyful. And we jumped. So, all right. So what, who is our Bible pal about being joyful? The lemur, right. Lively. Lively the lemur. So are lemurs lively? Yes. <laughs> they like to jump and climb, and they're on the go all the time. And so lively helped us remember to be joyful and happy, right? Because sometimes the things don't always go our way, but we have to remember Jesus has a plan for all of us, and he knows the beginning from the end. He knows that what's best for us. And so sometimes we think that we weren't treated fairly or something happened, it wasn't in our favor, but Jesus is always there. And, and again, he's going to watch over us and make sure those decisions are the best for us. So Lively likes to be lively. And the last that we learned about was um, the woman at the well and how she was kind of shunned by everyone. And after Jesus spoke with her, she ran back to the village and told everybody. And she was excited and joyful and happy because she had met Jesus and he had forgiven her sins and she was excited. And she had to tell the whole village about Jesus and how wonderful he was. All right, guys, do you want to have a seat? And I'll collect these. Thank you so much for helping me. You got it? All right. All right. And so I'm now going to turn it over to our pastor, Tyler, who was doing the closing in Daba every night with the kids. And he's going to talk more about those Bible stories we briefly talked about. Well, good morning. For those of you that aren't usual Attenders here, this is not how our church looks every Sabbath. Uh, we have a special, obviously, Sabbath for, for the Vacation Bible School, and it's, it's fun. You know, we're, we're a church family, and a good, good families have give focus to the kids, you know? And so this is one of our special Sabbaths where we get to turn our attention in, onto our kids here. And as Kimberly has mentioned, every night we learned new Bible stories, new Bible verses, new friends, uh, animals. It was, a, it was a great time. And part of the, the, the things that the kids did was to help enact or act out the Bible stories through the slides and have their picture taken as they acted them out. And so we're going to have, we're going to go over the Bible stories and you, you'll get to see your kids on the screen that at some point as they have participated in these various Bible stories. And the, the really neat thing about Bible stories is they're not just for kids. You know, the Bible stories that we're going to see were meaningful to the kids throughout the week, but they're meaningful to people throughout their lives, through all ages. And so I encourage you as you listen to the stories, as you see your, your kids or your grandkids' pictures up there, uh, you know, enjoy it, but also see what the story might be speaking to your, to your heart this morning. Our first story is Adam and Eve. Way back in the beginning of time, the Creator God made everything perfect. He made clear blue sky and birds to fly in the sky. He made beautiful trees and green grass and amazing animals. He made delicious fruit to eat. The first humans he made were perfect beings, and he named them Adam and Eve. The Creator told them that they could eat any fruit out of the tree, out of any tree they wanted, except for a certain tree. They weren't even to go near it or touch it, or they would die. One day, the woman was walking and noticed there was a beautiful snake in the tree that the Creator told him to stay away from, but the snake offered her some fruit. The fruit looked so good, she could not understand why she was told to stay away from it. So she took the fruit and ate it. If that wasn't bad enough, Eve gave some of the fruit to Adam, and he ate it too. 
all of a sudden, they felt really bad for disobeying the Creator. When the Creator asked them why they ate the fruit after he asked them not to, the woman blamed the snake and said, The snake made me do it. And the man said, The woman made me do it. Because the man and the woman didn't obey the Creator, they had to leave their beautiful garden home. Adam and Eve were so sad that they allowed sin to enter their perfect home, and as a result, all of us have sinned. The good news is that the Creator God made a way to save us from sin by sending His Son to die in our place and to save them and everyone else in this sinful world, including you and me, so that we can live. The end of story number one. Story number two is about Esther. And to build the anticipation, we will look at this beautiful scenic lake. Ah, Queen Esther, night number two. Esther was a Jewish girl living in the kingdom of Persia with her cousin Mordecai. One day, Esther heard that the king was looking for a new queen, and so she went to the palace and spent a whole year undergoing beauty treatments. Finally, she got to meet the king and was very nervous. The king knew as soon as he saw Esther that she was his favorite, and he crowned her queen. One day, the king decided to honor one of his favorite officials, a man named Haman. He ordered everyone to bow when they saw Haman, but Mordecai would not bow to Haman, and this made Haman mad. Haman found out that Mordecai was a Jew, and so was mad that Mordecai wouldn't bow to him, that he decided that all the Jews should be put to death. The king didn't know Esther was a Jew, and so he agreed with the plan. Mordecai sent word to Esther. She knew she had to do something for her people, but first she needed all of the Jews to pray with her. After they prayed for three days, Esther knew she needed to go to see the king, but she knew that the law said that if she went to the king without an invitation, she could be killed. So she was scared that the king would be angry when she went to see him. But he was happy to see her and extended the royal scepter to her. So she invited him to a banquet with Haman. At the dinner, Esther asked the king to spare the lives of her people. The king didn't know Esther was a Jew, and so he was confused and wanted to know who was trying to kill her. Esther pointed at Haman and said, He is the enemy of my people. The king was very angry and ordered that Haman be taken away and executed. The king ordered that all of the Jewish people be spared. Esther had saved her people because of her bravery. Night number three, Dorcas. The Bible tells us the story of a woman named Dorcas who loved helping people, especially by making clothes and giving them to people who did not have much. One day, Dorcas got very sick and she died. All the people that knew Dorcas were very sad. The people heard that Peter one of Jesus' disciples, was visiting a town nearby, so they asked him to come and see her. Peter went to the town, and when Peter got to the town, the people showed him the clothes that Dorcas had made for them. He went to see Dorcas and asked everyone to leave the room. 
Peter knelt down and prayed to God, asking him to perform a miracle for Dorcas. When he had finished praying, he said, Dorcas, get up. She opened her eyes and sat up. The people were so happy to see her alive again. They were so happy that Peter could help Dorcas after she had helped so many people. Day number four, we learned about Moses. A long time ago, the Israelites had become slaves in the country of Egypt. They were forced to do hard work all day for the Egyptians with no pay. There were so many Israelites that Pharaoh was afraid that they would take over the kingdom of Egypt. So he decided to get rid of all of the Israelite baby boys. An Israelite woman named Jochebed had a baby boy. And in order to save his life, she made a watertight basket. She put her baby in it and then put the basket in the Nile River. One day, when Pharaoh's daughter went down to the river, she found the basket and found the baby inside. She decided to name him Moses and raise him as her own son as part of the royal family. But Moses knew that he was really an Israelite. And one day, while walking along, he saw an Egyptian being mean to an Israelite slave. Moses defended the slave and killed the Egyptian. Moses became frightened that Pharaoh would find out, and so he ran away to the land of Midian. After living in Midian for many years, God spoke to Moses in a burning bush and told him to go back to Egypt to set the Israelites free. Moses was scared, but God said he would be with him. So Moses and his family packed up and went to Egypt. In Egypt, Moses went before Pharaoh and told him that God had said, let my people go free. But Pharaoh was stubborn and said, no. Because Pharaoh was stubborn, terrible things started to happen to the Egyptians. God sent plagues of insects like flies and locusts. There were plagues of darkness Hail, water turning to blood, lice, and people got sores all over their bodies. The Egyptians couldn't get away from all these horrible things that were happening. Then, because Pharaoh still wouldn't let the Israelites go, something really awful happened. All of the firstborn Egyptian children died. Pharaoh was so sad after losing his son that he told Moses that he could take his people and go free. Moses went back to his people and told them that God had finally set them free. Our last story is from night number five, the woman at the well. The Bible tells a story about a Samaritan woman who went to a well one day to get water. In fact, every day in this village, the, woman, the women would go get water and catch up with their friends, but no one would talk to this woman. One day, when she went to the well, she was surprised to see a man there, and he asked her for a drink of water. She was so surprised because this man was a Jew, and she was a Samaritan. Jews did not talk to Samaritans. The man told her that he could give her living water, and that she would never be thirsty again. Not only that, but he seemed to know everything about her, and still loved her. She was so excited about this living water, and so excited about meeting Jesus, the Messiah, that she left her pitcher of water and ran back to her village and told everyone what she had heard. The people in the village wanted to see for themselves, so they went out to meet Jesus. And they discovered that God wants to fill us with living water so that we can be with him forever.
These are some of the neat stories that the children are able to learn this week. And what's really neat is while our church sanctuary doesn't usually look like this, every Sabbath we do have a children's program, a children's church in the, the, our Better Living Center. And there they get to basically continue on with this VBS theme for every Sabbath for the rest of the year. We call it Saturday morning VBS. And so they'll continue to come and learn more about great stories uh, that they learn from VBS and uh, beyond. And so if you're looking uh, for a church family to join or if you want your kids really love VBS so much, I invite you to, to bring them back on Sabbath mornings as they participate uh, year-round learning and having fun and singing good songs uh, and learning more about Jesus. Sing Song of Freedom. And if anybody wants to join me, come on up. And this is the sign for song. If you, any of you want to join us? See, so would you stand with us, please? Right there. this week in Jami Kingdom VBS is that we collected money for a town in Mozambique, Africa, that they're putting more water kiosks because the villages there don't have clean and fresh water. So they're using the rivers for bathing, for cleaning dishes, 
for using the toilet, just everything and anything they used the river for. And when they had to go down to get water for their drinking water, they have to carry these large jugs right all the way down to the river and then bring it all back. So ADRA um, is a nonprofit that is building these water kiosks throughout so that Africa, so that people can have a place to go and only, they only have to walk a couple of blocks in their village so that they can have these clean water kiosks and they can actually turn it. I mean, I know we, we are very spoiled, right? Because we just go to our faucets and we turn it on. And if something's wrong and we have to turn the water off, we're not usually very happy, are we? <laughs> because then we have to maybe go buy bottled water. So we have a very, very convenient. And I just want you to know that throughout the week, everyone came and was donating. Guess how much money we raised? <laughs> Well, that would have been wonderful, but I don't think we quite made that one. But we raised $255 and some change. So that was wonderful. So I want to give everybody a hand. And now, do you want to put it in there? It's $256 and some change. <laughs> oh, and 200 and, All right, well, we're, maybe we're going to even possibly get close to 300 That would be wonderful because the water kiosks are always needed. <laughs> Thank you everyone for your generosity. I know we take things for granted. And it's nice to know that we can help others, right, in other countries that don't have all the advantages that we have. Well, I don't know. We might be getting close to 300 by now. <laughs> that would be really cool. Thank you so much, everyone. We really, really appreciate it. And it's exciting because all week the kids watched a segment on the kiosk, the water kiosk that they were building and how it made a difference in the villages. And they interviewed some of the people that lived in the village and just how it made a difference for them. And they had more time because they didn't have to walk to the river. They could feel comfortable that this water kiosk had clean, fresh water for them. And it, what a huge difference, right? Thank you. Thank you. We are excited. And this money will be deposited and then sent off to ADRA so that they can go and get these kiosks made as quickly as possible for the people over there. So anyway, we also want to thank everybody for attending. And we're going to have, um, we're going to collect an offering. There is no pressure. What we like to do is collect an offering for our Vacation Bible School because it does take a lot of time, energy, and resources to make this happen. And so everyone's a volunteer. But there's still the cost of building, the decorations, set designs, getting supplies. So we're going to collect an offering, and then we will be closing up with a couple little uh, remarks and our VBS graduation certificates. So at this time, you will come on up, and we will be collecting an offering. Did you want to put it in there? <laughs> Thank you.
All right. We are going to hand out the VBS graduation certificates. Diane is going to be helping me. We had almost 70 kids come through. However, a lot of them couldn't be here today. So if they aren't here today, we'll be mailing them their certificates uh, because we want them to know we appreciated them coming and, and having fun with us. So we're going to announce the, the tribe leaders. And if you're here, you can stand up, and then we will be giving you your certificates. All right, we had tribe one was the eager elephants. And where are the eager elephants? Okay, Brent's taking over because our crew leader, Lou, could not be here this morning. So we have Kylie Albers, Sophia Albers, Kristen Bowman, and Andrew Brown. All right, tribe two, the lazy lions. I don't think they were really lazy, but because <laughs> they were moving all the time. And the leader was Joji Treveo. And we had Amaka, Amuto, Everly Huffman, Addison Miles, Kasiva, Mundi, and Jonathan Romero. <laughs> tribe three, the bossy baboons. And I don't know that they were really bossy either, but. <laughs> Nadia, were you bossy? <laughs> and Nadia was the uh, tribe leader, and Paul Kavuga was her assistant. And we had uh, Jaslyn, Victoria, Ella, Marisol, and Sophia in that tribe. Tribe four, the humble hyenas. And the leader was Brent Valdez, and Emmanuel Pina was his assistant. And they had Layla, Noah, and Christopher. All right, good job, guys. Tribe five, the wise wildebeests. And the leaders was Mafaro and Isla, and they unfortunately couldn't be here this morning. But Gloria, is Gloria here? Ah, there she is. And Vidiles, Vidiles, all right, thank you. Nayari and Faith. Ah. Faith is right back there. Then Faith is right. Right, Faith, can you raise your hand? Thank you. Is Nayari here this morning? Is that Faith is all the way in the back. Faith is all the way in the back. <laughs> All right, so the adventurous aardvarks, leader, Prince Valdez. And we had Ali, Valentina, Riley, and Hugo. All right. Right there. <laughs> the Sea of Red. Tribe Seven, the objectionable ostriches. I don't know if any of you have ever dealt with ostriches. Last time I fed one, which was a few weeks ago, it bit me. So... <laughs> That's why we came up with objectionable. Um, anyway, so Eliasib, is he here this morning? I don't see Eliasib. Okay, he was the crew leader. And we have Alicia, um, Emma. I see, the, I need my glasses. <laughs> and Brianna. Thank you. Good job, guys. <laughs> Tribe nine, the charming cheetahs. And Mitch Pino was the tribe leader. I don't know where Mitch is. I saw him out there a little bit ago. And he had Alex and Ariana. Is Alex and Ariana this, here this morning? Aha. Good job. Tribe 10, the mighty meerkats. And Kadosan was the tribe leader. And Azareel was his assistant. And we had Isabella and Stella Ray. <laughs> tribe 11, the gigantic giraffes. Emily Pina was tribe leader. She had Hirsch and Nathan. <laughs> tribe 12, the remarkable rhinos. Shiva and was the, Farahani was the tribe leader. She couldn't be here this morning, but Tice, she had Tice in her group. No, Tice is not here this morning. Yeah. 
She had two others in her group, but they didn't end up being able to come, so that was unfortunate. But Tyson and her had a good time together. So drive 13. And that's the lovable lemurs. Leader, Sydney, and her assistant was Edgar. And they had Sky and Jamie. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Tribe 15 or 14, excuse me. The Merciful Monkeys. It was Delilah, who was the crew leader. And we had Naya, Alejandra, Sela, and Sanaya. All right. Now we're at Tribe 15, the Swift Servals. How many of you know what a serval is? Yeah, it's a, an African cat. So, and they're pretty cool. But anyway, the leader is Heather, Polly. Is Heather here? There she is. And she had Andrea, Chi-Chi, Nandi, and Mako. Tribe 16, the bashful bush babies. Eric was tribe leader and Vlad assistant. So we had Noah, Alejandra, Jade, Raymond, and Skyler. And then we moved on to our Watoto Way preschool tribes. And the first one was active antelopes. Lonnie was the leader. There she's tribe leader. Victoria. Alexis and Arky were her three. And Watoto Way Preschool Tribe 2 is the Zippy Zebras. Erica is the tribe leader. She unfortunately couldn't be here this morning. She had Lena, Cassandra, Mason, and Jamie. All right. Do we know? There's, there's, there's um, Elena. Is Kenneth here? Jamie? Oh, there she's Janie, right there, okay. And preschool three, tribe three is the happy hippos. And Carly is the tribe leader. Where's Carly? She's there she is. And she had Brant, Jayla, Spencer, Goodman, and Avrit. All right. Do we have some extras? So if you are here and you didn't get your certificate, please see us right afterwards. Tribe leaders, if you got some certificates and your kids aren't here, bring them back to us so we can mail them out, okay? Before we wrap up, we just wanted to say thank you. And um, I have a few thank yous just because it takes a village to make this happen. And... Um, it just takes a lot of people. It, I get emotional about this, sorry. But um, it has been a long but short time, it seems, because this is our 14th year. And it has been a lot of fun, and we've had a lot of variety, but it always takes a lot of people. So I just want to um, have the crew leaders stand up, so I want to recognize all our crew leaders. So crew leaders and assistant crew leaders, stand up. All right, because they're responsible for taking all the kids from station to station. Uh, I want to thank our registration team, headed by Emily, our AV team up there, with Sony and John, and our, our Spotlight Bible BBS was actually created by Diana and, and John with the PowerPoint, so I want to say special thanks. We had Becky and Jackie at the table selling t-shirts, so thank you there. And Kathy uh, Igarashi was handling our set design, and her husband Garrett created the t-shirts. So I want to thank them. And Brent <laughs> and Prince helped as well with the t-shirts, so big thanks to you guys. There's a lot of t-shirts to print, let me tell you. <laughs> I think we printed about 120, something like that. Crazy number. And then um, we also had all of our station leaders. So we had um, 
We had Leo in our Ferrari field games. Leo, I where you are. <laughs> there he is. We had Angel, I don't think she's here. She and Jim Byerly, the principal of our school, was involved with the crafts. They took care of the craft station, so thank you to them. We had Michael on, who was in charge of snacks, and his wife B was helping him, as well as Joyce Western and some others, so thank you there. And I twisted his arm and made him make these hippo cookie treats for the third night. <laughs> and we also had um, our Perry experience, which is all the way at the end of the hall. That was our prayer station, and that was Irene and Michelle Laban, so I want to thank them. We also had our Habari hut, which was our Bible stories every night, and that was Wes Huffman and Mike McKean. Thank you. And then we had our Watoto Way preschool, and that was Rod Western, Irma Polly, Pat Kibbe, and Cecilia Mafuka were doing the crafts, the games, the Bible stories, and everything else to make that preschool program run smoothly. So I want to give them a hand. And Pastor Tyler handled the Indaba closing every night, so thank you. I hope there was no one that I missed, and I've, I did, I apologize, is there anybody else that you can think of? There were always people that came to help set up, decorate, and we're going to have to tear down tonight at 8.30, so I'm hoping we'll get a good group tonight because there's ice cream sundaes at the end. But, <laughs> so anyway, I just want to thank everybody for coming. It's been a great experience. We loved having your kids. As Pastor Tyler said, we have our Bible Adventures VBS program every Saturday morning from 10.45 till noon, and they have lots of fun. They get great snacks. They sing. They learn a Bible story, do some activities. So if you're ever interested in bringing them, we'd love to have them. And with that, oh. thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's my passion, so that's why I'm here. Thanks. All right. Well, thank you again for coming. But we're not quite done yet. We have uh, some snacks, some uh, finger food, some munchies, a lot of it actually, ready for you. Uh, I think it's in the, the Better Living Center. So... Just where the kids had their snacks, if your kids are here, just follow them. They'll take you right to where they need to be to eat. Um, and also, uh, church members, we need some more help to take, to take all these decorations down. And the church looks great, but we need to, to really uh, get it back to uh, the way it normally looks and get, uh, get the stuff put into storage. So please meet here at 8.30 if you can help take this down. So let's, uh, let's close with prayer, and then we can go... Uh, eat some food. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for your blessings, for the blessings we had every night during Vacation Bible School, for the blessing we had of being here this morning and learning and uh, relearning some of the, the great things that we learned and seeing some of the great songs again. We ask that you would continue to, to be with us, continue to bless us, continue to teach us, and continue to be our best friend. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen.